am the chief evangelist uh, for artificial intelligence and intelligent automation. Um, so I have around 17 years of experience in data science um, and the emerging technologies. So, so today uh, we are going to look at uh, the time series modeling in manufacturing industry. Um, so how, um, how time series modeling can be useful for the manufacturing and logistics industry? Um, so we will, uh, I mean, for the next one hour, we will see um, slowly about what is the introduction and what are the different components available in time series modeling and what are the different types of you know, time series modeling. I have a, a good real time use cases that I have built in. I will share you the experience of how time series can be implemented in the real world use cases. So let's, let's go ahead, right? So what is time series? So, um, so here, time series is a sequence of uh, data collection points on a different time frames, on an equal time frames. I mean, for example, if you can take a yearly data, I mean, each and every year there is a data being collected. It is an equal interval of yearly um, intervals wherein the data has been collected. Let's take care, like, I mean, I, it is not mandatory to keep it a yearly one. It can be the data points or a time frame can be uh, monthly, quarterly, or a daily, or even hourly. Right? I'll, I'll give some examples of how a data can be collected for a, I mean, for a time series yearly patterns. In a government, government will take the necessary steps to collect the population data in terms of census. So they take a, each and every year, uh, they will collect the data. That is the yearly time series data. And what happens, uh, I mean, uh, what happens in the scenario of monthly? So like a monthly, uh, there is a point of collecting a electricity data or maybe monthly maintenance data or maybe um, in, a, in a cash flow data on a monthly wise that you, I mean, that you are taking, it is a monthly data. And the hourly data, how do we calculate? So hourly that you want to check the inventory um, in an operations, check the inventory of, I mean, in a factory, check the inventory on a, on a, on a store and et cetera, right? So this is hourly data. As well as on the manufacturing side, how do we do it? So uh, there will be three shift running. So in terms of three shift, um, each and every hour that you are actually um, mm, collecting a data of how many parts are being produced and how many good parts and how many bad parts, and, and upon that, you are collecting a data, which is a hourly data that is being collected. And data which is collected without non-regularity will not be a time series level of data. Okay? So how do we use in the normal, uh, normal domain perspective? So in the banking and financial mm -hmm. services, what are the different uh, um, time series data or a different time series model that can be used, for example, in the stock market prices? So each and every minute, the stock prices will increase. I mean, not even every minute, even every second and, and, and every 10 seconds, the stock prices may be very depends on the demand, depends on, um, uh, depends on, the, on the demand volume, on the, the PE ratio, PC ratio, and so on, right? So it happens, uh, stock prices, asset prices, macroeconomic factors. So these are all the data wherein in terms of banking and financial services, it can be used, I mean, the time series can be used, right? Uh, so in terms of manufacturing and logistics, you can take a machine run level data um, and then uh, the supply chain data and the fleet management. So so from here to, from Chennai to Bangalore, uh, fleet is moving between Chennai to Bangalore. Those level of data are being, um, or, or, or level of being, um, it can uh, be achieved using time series data. And e-commerce data, the page visits, how many people are visited, um, the, how many searches that happens, and et cetera. So this is our uh, few examples that I'm quoting, but there are many more use cases that you can play around with time series data. Right? So what are the applications of uh, the time series? So um, economic forecasting, I mean, at a high level, economic forecasting, um, stock market, um, analysis, um, demand planning and forecasting, um, anomaly detection. So something like a fraud detection um, in in banking, right? So we'll take one by one and then try to understand 
how I mean how it will impact uh, the time series models and etc. So economic forecasting, right? So what is economic forecasting? So World Trade Organization they will keep on predicting and forecasting how my um, I mean I mean how is the GDP for a country is about, right? And 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 like Federal Reserve um, time series. So they also will do a, um, a time series on, on on each and every time they will evaluate what is my reserve and what is my cash flow and how is my cash flow going and how do I predict my next three months of data and how do I predict my next three months of um, you know the reserve value and so on and what is the demand forecasting right so in a um, Amazon is actually uh, doing such activity. Um, Amazon and other e-commerce platform for that matter. Um, so they do um, uh, they do time series for their predictions on the demand at each and every products. So um, so they will have each and every categories. So each and every categories um, they have a bunch of you know products are being aligned. So using that bunch of products, how many products are kind of uh, you know fast moving, and what type of forecasting that they can provide it to the sellers and so on. And likewise, you can also keep, you know, so many things like, for example, inventory prediction and, you know, inventory forecasting. So my demand is X and, and how do I do an inventory um, of, uh, of X to be, you know, filled in automatically by the, uh, uh, I mean, by the inventory people and so on, right? Right, so anomaly detection is something like a fraud detection, right? So using the time series modeling, you can also uh, uh, prevent frauds, and 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 you can play around with um, with the fraud detection using uh, in insurance as well as in banking. Each and every transaction that happens, you can always say that these are all fraud, these are all non-fraud, these are all um, you know uh, insurance third-party claims are fraud and so on. So what are the different components of time series? So, um, so when you say time series, I said about the time series, each and every level of data that you are collecting uh, using uh, regular intervals. So there will be a trend, right? So there will be a trend. So if you take a throughout a year level of data, there will be an upward trend or there will be a downward trend. Say for example, there is a sales happens. So the sales generally happens um, um, upward trend or maybe a downward trend, or it may be a seasonal one. For example, in a retail stores, um, if, if I can say, um, during a festival seasons, the retail stores will uh, will have an increased trend, and during off season, there will be a decreased trend. So during that seasonality, there will be a spike, there will be a dip, as well as it automatically increases. That is a seasonality one. But if it's a trend for a normal, you know, company wide, so it will say uh, the sales projections are kind of increasing trend, or the sales projection is kind of decreasing trend based on the business history of data. And there is a residual one, which is a kind of a, a irregular, you know, fluctuation one. It is called a, um, a residual, uh, you know, component that is being available in time series. Right, so, so as I mentioned, trend. Trend is captured um, during general, generally it will capture during a time frame, and there will be upward and there will be down, I mean, downturn, right? So for example, um, so increase job growth um, year over year, uh, despite of, you know, seasonal fluctuations. So it will be an increased trend or it will be a decreased trend. So if the economy is good, then you will see an inc uh, good. Then you will see an increased trend. If the economy is not not very you know satisfactory, then there will be a decreased trend in the job market. So trend can be of increasing uh, or a decreasing uh, or maybe a constant one. So there will be a constant uh, no growth this year. So there will be a very flat trend that happened throughout the year. As well as I'm saying, a trend um, could be an yearly one. But the data points that can be collected on a hourly, or maybe daily, or maybe weekly, or maybe monthly. 
so it can increase or a decrease uh, different ways linearly um, and exponentially right seasonality right so so as i mentioned um, like for example e-commerce platforms um, they um, they will come up with a lot of sale during seasons uh, off seasons uh, that we make it as off seasons to um, to to push the sales but at the same time um, during a seasonal uh, the festival time um, they will push for more sale uh, more more offers promotions that they will be listing down so that the sales is actually you know improves right so that is a seasonal one if you take it um, a duration of an uh, yearly sales happens for a retail stores or e-commerce one you can see the seasonality one uh, trend which is upward when it comes to uh, the festival seasons and local uh, the local festival happens there will be upward trend or a downward trend right so so that is a seasonality one there will be fluctuations happens back and forth but that is a uh, you know uh, seasonality so let's go into the real world uh, you know the time series case study right right so um, so in general um, analytics or a data science projects uh, the workflow will actually happens uh, between data preparation uh, is the first one um, so during the data preparation you will do data collection um, and then data cleansing you will cleanse the data and then um, when you cleanse the data you will remove the error records um, um and 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 you will um, remove the outliers and etc based on the business scenarios so after we do data collection and data preparation and cleaning then uh, we do data exploration wherein you will make sense of the data then when you do the sense of the data um you will um you will get to know understanding get more hold of the data so then we will do a model preparation so when we do model preparation um so before doing a model preparation we do hypothesis testing of the data what we have to do whether we have to do the demand forecasting or maybe we have to do um what type of forecasting that is being there uh, being um, uh, for this data what type of you know models that we have to select and etc and um, when we do model planning uh, we have to do model preparation then then once the model is prepared we do model evaluation by comparing with two or three models and which model is actually you know good enough to justify it and we will take the appropriate model and then justify it right so so here uh, this is the overall structure of any data science project so here uh, data collection and preparation so i will give you the background of this manufacturing company um so this manufacturing company is based out um, in us so they have uh, six factories across us um so it is a plastic injection molding company um so they will they um, they develop um, uh, the plastics um, containers uh, small from small to big um, and then they will do formational uh, you know plastics and uh, rotational plastics to make uh, all their products so here um, here the challenge here is they want to understand um uh, they want to understand um, the machine level of data uh, what are the machines or kind of um, good performing machines and what are the machine which are uh, least performing machines so there is a um, uh, there is a concept in the manufacturing industry called overall equipment efficiency oee right so this oee will be calculated um, across all machines for each of the shift and each of the uh, parts are being produced by um, i mean by the machines right so this oee will be calculated in each of the shifts uh, uh, each of the shifts so from um, uh, from each of the shift the percentage will be calculated right so based on um, the the parts are being produced by the machine the good parts as well as the bad parts and what is the run time and what is the down time right so if you can see the data so the data is the first one could be the machine number and 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 what is that um, parts are being produced job number part number mm -hmm. and and what is the run time 
and what are the good parts, bad parts, and what is the um, uh, time taken, uh, the cycle time, and etc. And what is the overall um, uh, equipment efficiency is being described. Right. So the pain point from um, uh, from the customer is that one, they want to identify what are the machines are are good performing machines. So can I offload some of the bad performing machines? And give the load to a good performing machines to make it, uh, I mean, make it much more productive. Number two, uh, if there is any, um, if there is any, um, if there is any, um, so in US there will be a, um, a power shutdown will happen during the winter season. So based on analytics, how we can bring down, uh, uh, how we can turn off the machines whenever uh, there is a possibility. Right, so that level of you know information should be you know given to the customer. So I hope you have seen the data. Um, so I will keep answering uh, the questions at the last, but but this is the level of data I mean, for now. So this data has been collected for more than um, three years, from 2000, um, 2013, 14, and 15, um, and then. Um, using the data, we have to do a time series model. Okay. So this is a data exploration. So in general, we know the pattern here. So we know the pattern. So I have removed a few of the columns which are not necessary here, but we have a big number of chunks of data. There will be more than um, uh, 2 million data that we have actually provided. I have given only the gist because each and every shift, there is a big, uh, big, uh, you know, data are being collected by there will be a downtime there will be a there will be a runtime there will be a uh, job changes and etc right so so i have taken only the gist of the data and then shown it to you but there is a big number of uh, numbers that has been you know i mean provided so here as a next step the data exploration right so here um, what we have done is so uh, we have taken department versus shift level for each of the departments, right? So as I mentioned, um, there are several factories. They are brute, EP West, uh, you know, foam, uh, the rotational, miscellaneous one, miscellaneous two, and so on, right? So these are all uh, between departments and, and as well as between shifts we have compared, right? So if you can see at the last one, the rotational, there is only one shift happens, but the remaining um, are kind of dark as dot, right? So it is a simple, um, you know, exploration that we have done it uh, with comparison of uh, department versus shift, as well as downtime. I mean, I mean downturn. Um, you can also see see the exploration, right? So this this data exploration is is with the runtime data, and how the runtime is actually um, uh, inclined with the good parts data. So if you can see, the runtime is within the time limit, and there are outliers. So this is a plain box plot that we have built in, right? So using the box plot, you can also, you know, understand what are the outliers and whether the outliers are kind of error or maybe whether it is kind of, uh, you know, eliminate from the files and etc. right? So here, if you can see the runtime data, so the runtime is actually within the boxes and there are a few outliers which we have to actually consider it. So the, and then there is a good parts data. So the good parts data is not very uh, uh, very clean, but if you can correlate between runtime as well as good parts, it is actually ha having a good correlation. So I have I have also given the correlation uh, you know matrix at the um, I mean I mean two slides after this. Right? So underneath, if you can see um, um, there is a line graph, the line graph uh, which is actually um, how is the lines, uh, uh, the good parts are being produced for a yearly wise. So it is simple data exploration. Um, why we have to do an exploration is that. So so once you get the data, you have to find out uh, whether if there is any outliers, right, number one. Number two, when there is an outlier, um, whether it is a real outlier or, 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 or it is a fake outlier, right? So if it is a fake outlier, then you have to remove the outlayer to make the accuracy to to improve the accuracy. Right. So so likewise, uh, there are plenty of scenarios wherein you have to do exploration. This is not only 
one way that you can do exploration. You can also do your own way of doing an exploration operator. Right. So, so this is again a, a yearly three years of data that I have listed down. So this this is something that your runtime versus the downtime data. Right. So when you uh, um, when you see the runtime and downtime data. Um, here, the runtime should be high and the downtime should be low. But what happens, we have seen a, a, a different things here is that so downtime, uh, sometimes it happens very high. And you know, we have to understand why it is very high, right? So whether it is an issue with labor or maybe issue with real machine or there's a different issue altogether, right? So I have not shown uh, plenty of other things on the scatter plot that we did on why it is um, uh, why the um, data is kind of you know outlier that is being shown on the downtime, but when we when we do a complete extraction of the data, you will get to know why the downtime is more and why the runtime is very less. Right. So here, um, uh, so there is a good part versus um, uh, bad part. I mean the scrap parts. So what is a good part and what is a, a, a scrap part is that. So from the machine, there is a job number and there is a part number. So the job number uh, is is uh, job number is uh, something like a parts to be produced. So for example, there is a uh, plastic injection molding, which which develops by a plastic box to be developed. So if it is developed as one product outside, I mean um, way after. Uh, the plastic injection being injected into the machine and the output of the injection molding could be one plastic box will be developed successfully is, is good parts. And, and sometimes there will be an error. The plastic injection molding will not fit in and it will not produce the good box, right? So that is a scrap, uh, uh, that is a scrap one. So, so here we are actually comparing between uh, the good parts versus the scrap parts. Uh, so here also again, as I mentioned, the runtime versus downtime issue that we have actually seen, uh, the good parts actually produced is high, uh, as well as at the same time, few machines have produced a scrap part at a very high rate. So now here we have to understand why the scrap parts are, you know, produced at a very high in each, in each of the shift. So if it each of the shift, then we have to understand who is the labor whether the labor is not able to handle the machine or the machine overall equipment efficiency, efficiency is actually low. Okay? So those two things have to be identified here. So this is again a um, good exploration um, when we compare all the data here. So here, um, so, so let, me, let me quickly go to the, uh, the correlation matrix that we have built up. So here, when we uh, do a correlation between um, uh, runtime, downtime, good parts, crap parts, we have seen a good correlation between the runtime um, and the good parts, and the downtime and the and the scrap parts, right? So, so what we have done here is based on the correlation matrix, we have to forecast the runtime, downtime, uh, good parts and scrap parts for each of the machines, and what could be the overall efficiency. Uh, the overall equipment efficiency, right? These five things that we have to do a forecasting for each of the machines to be identified. So why 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 I'm you know constantly saying is that see these five factors mm -hmm. of this data could be very very uh, you know much more needed here because to identify next to three weeks what is my forecasting whether my machines are kind of performing good or whether my uh, overall equipment efficiency is coming down for a particular machine and so on. So that we can able to identify between runtime, downtime, and 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 uh, good parts and scrap parts. Right. So these four elements are very 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 important, and it is actually linked to overall equipment efficiency. These five elements that we have, I mean, we have to actually need to identify as a forecasting parts. So can you please speak loudly? Right. Okay. So now, now is it fine? Okay, great. So, um, so when we do uh, the model evaluation, um, so we have 
we have used compared between four models uh, simple moving average so within time series there is an arima model there are plenty of arima uh, within arima there are plenty of arima models are being uh, given as well as uh, there is a simple moving average model that we have to uh, do so here using this um, um, so so this manufacturing data model which we and i mean we are actually seeing a good trend and seasonality right so we have seen a trend we have seen a seasonality so we are going to apply a halt winter method models right so when we say halt winter what is it halt winter um, halt winter is a um, the scientist that who has developed um, the the halt winter methods so if there is a trend and seasonality in um, in a, in a, in a data so then you can apply um, trend and seasonality so there is a alpha beta and gamma so alpha is no trend no seasonality to compare each of the model evaluation right so um, so there is a trend uh, there is a no trend no seasonality one there is a trend and no seasonality and then there is a trend and seasonality so that it, it is called alpha beta and gamma so we have to uh, make zero out of each of the terms so then you can uh, always build a model upon it right so here we have built a model efficiency in comparison with um, all the forecasting you know values and ssc parameters right so the simple moving average is one um, and then uh, as i mentioned the halt winter methods uh, three methods that we have actually built on right so when you see the high 95 and low 95 and 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 high 80 and so on so those are all post when i mean when you build your r i mean uh, you can use both r as well as python so now uh, the python is actually very good in terms of building such models which is much more efficient as well right so and and it is very very simpler nowadays wherein you can actually build models very quickly in python right so so here if you can see the high 95 and compare the numbers if you can see it is somewhere between 3 4 4 1 1 1 and so on right so these numbers are very very essential to to compare the result so here from june um, uh, sorry july august and september we have um, we have calculated the forecasting based on the parameters likewise the same level of uh, july august and september we have forecasted uh, it for halt winter alpha beta gamma models if you can see the high 95 the underneath the gamma models which is actually high which eventually can actually proves it very clearly that uh, halt winter methods with trend and seasonality could be apt one model which we can able to predict it right here so here the forecasting um, of the total parts being produced so as i mentioned earlier so we have to do a forecasting of five elements here so one on the run time um, down time good parts and the scrap parts and the overall equipment efficiency right so here we face some challenge in terms of uh, you know calculating the overall equipment efficiency so we have not you know move forward on the overall equipment efficiency as in the i mean collecting data for oee itself a challenge it, it have it has a big formula to be collected so we cannot able to justify it why the oee is less for each of the machines so i am saying for only this parameter i mean for, i mean only for this level of data but if the data is much more uh, you know cleaner and much more good enough to handle the oee then you can all I mean, then you can always you i mean use the oee calculation can be done so so here also uh, i mean if you can see uh, the model comparison is between simple moving average as well as to um, uh, the halt winter models between alpha beta and gamma this is being you know done for it so if you can see again uh, the alpha beta gamma models so the gamma models is actually outperforming uh, if you can see the numbers if you can see uh, the numbers are very high when it compares to all other models so which is eventually can able to prove that you know um, the good parts number of good parts number of bad parts are produced in each of the the factories um, is kind of very high so we can able to identify here that ep west one ep west two and 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 foam and roto is actually performing right 
and 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 there is a roto uh, you know factory which is actually not performing good so we can able to justify it here by using this calculation okay. so i will i will stop here to take uh, um, if you have any questions give me one minute i'll just pick uh, one by one questions uh, and then answer you Right. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, I'll I'll just quickly um, go to a um, couple of things that you can actually do some exploration. Right. So um, okay. So here, um, what happens is um, we have taken the complete machine level data. So um, using the machine level data versus the uh, uh, the products are being produced. So if you can see the pre-map um, here that we have actually produced, so what is that machine and how much of the parts are being produced and slowly uh, it is being reduced um, level of each of the machine. So here out of this five, I mean five, six factories are being there. You can always um, see and understand how the machine are being performing by the OEE as well as on, on, on the, on, on the good parts produced as well as on the bad part produced, right? So when, when we are doing a study here on the model evaluation, so we are comparing between model evaluation of a you know, simple moving average and, and, uh, and between halt winter methods, right? So when we do halt winter methods, um, so we are, we are actually doing a comparison between each of the machines. So we face some complexity in predicting all the machine level data. So we have used um, uh, the factory level of data, we have you know moved all the factory level of data. So then, uh, post which um, the factory, um, each of the factory you know performance. So from the each of the factory performance, we have given um, the high ninety five and then uh, the low ninety five and then high eighty and so on. So that way, um, so the halt winter methods with gamma uh, uh, gamma models is kind of outperforming here. So here also the gamma model is outperforming. So we are um, come to a conclusion where this model is apt as well as the machine, uh, good parts, bad parts, uh, runtime and downtime is good for each of the factories. So from each of the factory level of data, we are drilled down into each of the machine level data. Then we are actually produced um, a complete list as well as on, on on this criteria, the customer have asked, how do I group the machine? I mean, how do I classify the machines? And whether the classification happens based on the parts, based on uh, the type of parts are being produced. Uh, I mean, for example, uh, when I say plastic injection molding, the plastic injection molding, um, uh, the factories, machines are to be classified so the low performing machines has to be turned off and the high performing machines has to take the load at a very high rate as in it is more than 80 percentage of you know the effort uh, the overall equipment efficiency is there so um, so here we have made this cal i mean we have made this classification very clearly by using knn uh, uh, knn plus string right so this knn plus string will actually that we have we have done it by classifying most of the machines into one category and then uh, on the plastic injection molding. So on the rotational machines, we have classified it as well as on the foam machines that we have classified it. So out of which there are outliers which are low performing machines. So those machines are getting turned off. So, so, so as a rule in US, you don't have to wait for government to turn off your machine. From, I mean, from analytics, from the data, you can actually turn off the machine based on data. We can say that, you know, this machine, this machine is turned off and the same load has been given to the machine B to, to, to take up it, right? So one, the pain point of the customer has been addressed here. Um, 
turning off machines by saving the power. Number two, the OEE has been calculated for the utility. So then both of the problems are getting solved. Right. So I'll again uh, stop here to see if we have any questions. Okay, so uh, I got a question from um, Dharamjeet. Uh, what is Arima? Right. So, um, so Arima is a one type of model in time series. Um, so Arima, most of the Arima models are, are maybe, um, it can be used for, um, for stock prices predictions. So when, uh, when I say stock, stock, uh, stock market, I mean the predictions, for example, uh, I'll take one stock, right? Uh, Bajaj Finance. So Bajaj Finance stock price is somewhere between 2,400 now. So how do uh, um, it move? Uh, I mean, today the market is actually closed, but when it moves to tomorrow, uh, so how do uh, the market, uh, the stock prices of Bajaj Finance will move from A to B and B to C and so on, right? So tomorrow when it opens, um, so it can actually move from 2,400 uh, and so on to 2,410, or it comes to um, 2,390, right? So this movement uh, will actually happens when, when, uh, when there is a model being built, when there is a each and every uh, second of data being collected. So, so that is that, that level of data being collected um, so those level of data are being uh, collected by building an ARIMA methods. So most of the stock market pricing or your NAV calculation, the asset, uh, um, the asset value predictions are kind of happens using ARIMA methods. I hope you answered the question, uh, Dharamjit. So there is a one more question from um, Shushant. Can you explain about the halt, the halt winter methods? Uh, okay, um, so in general, Sushant, uh, the halt winter uh, methods. Um, so it is, uh, I mean, there are plenty of uh, uh, time series modeling. So one is Arima, one is halt winter. There are other um, uh, other methods are being used. So this halt winter especially um, can be used when there is a trend and seasonality. Uh, so, I mean, when I say trend and seasonality data, you can say um, um, the manufacturing data, you can say the logistics data, you can say uh, the e-commerce data. So there could there should be a trend and there should be a seasonality. Right? So, um, so as a pattern, um, when we see, um, I mean, when you get a data, if you can uh, run a plotting, so uh, you can always see the trend and the seasonality. By plotting it, you can see the trend and the seasonality. So then you can straightforward, you can actually go to the halt winter methods. So this halt winter generally, uh, um, when we do model evaluation here, uh, there is an alpha, beta, and gamma. So alpha is something um, that you are actually, you know, uh, uh, diminishing your um, trend value as well as the seasonality, I mean the seasonality value. So when we do that, we can understand how without trend, without seasonality, how the data is kind of performing, right? So the next model is the beta model. So the beta model is something like you are uh, uh, reducing your, uh, uh, so you have trend, but there is no seasonality. So using that data that you can actually plot it and then you can have a getting a result. So then after this, then you can actually say, or like build that, using both trend and seasonality, you will be getting a model evaluation value. So from the model evaluation, you can always say that alpha, beta, gamma, we have compared uh, so and so based on this, and we can getting this value. And just in case, it can see some of the uh, values if 
your trend value is high or maybe the alpha value is high beta value is small and gamma value is also small then we can come up to a conclusion that it is not fit in your fault fringe matrix right. so i'll take up the next question um, so this is uh, you know shekran's question can you share the outcome of the hypothesis you know testing for the the case right um, so one um, due to the time constraint um, i have not you know shared the hypothesis one but see when uh, when we do this uh, um, uh, when, when we do this activity um, we have um, we have come up to a conclusion saying that uh, the pain point of the customer has to be addressed number one number two uh, uh, there are a couple of you know pain points and we have some data issues uh, within that uh, i mean within the data so it is a real time machine data so we have a lot of issues in terms of it so uh, i don't have it right now uh, maybe i can take a separate class around the hypothesis testing of this data around right there is one more question from anzil um, is it right to say that arima arima methods will um, or without integration on seasonality or exogenous wars fit more of price predictions than sales forecasting right it's a very uh, very good question ansel um, so so in general if there is no seasonality see when we say stock prices prediction um when you say stock predictions arima can be used but how do the stock pricing will actually changes right so that could be various factors in it right so when i say various factors so it may be depends on your pe ratio it may be depends on your on on the pc ratio it may be depends on your volume of the volume of uh, um, the stock right so how much of the volume is actually present today and it may be uh, i mean there is a, a major factor if there is any news around the stocks and as well as on and what is the simple moving average today so so these are all four five factors and 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 um, so these four five factors are kind of you know pushing the stock prices into up or down right so there is no seasonality there but at the same time these factors are affecting the stock prices or it is impacting the stock prices i would say whether it is actually moving up upward or moving downward but the time um, so here the stock prices is actually taken from each of the times right so let's say 10 seconds the stock prices keeps changing based on the factors right so that way arima can be used only for 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 very minimal Uh, intervals that we are collecting data so those collection of data should be there when we are building it i mean when we are building the arima methods so even when you are collecting an electricity i mean for example in the house that you are collecting an electricity which in every you know 10 seconds you are collecting how much of the uh, unit is actually run so that is again becomes a arima i mean you can build using that uh, you know electricity data and you can always predict that how much of the electricity that i will be using for the next 3 weeks time right so so that level of you know data collection should be there when i mean when you are doing a arima methods right so i have one more question uh, from aishwarya prakash um what is the significance of model evaluation need specific answer okay see uh, um see model evaluation is that um, based on the data um, that you are getting you are building a model um, uh, based on the data getting you are preparing the data and then you you can you can you are coming up to a conclusion saying that um this model can be um, the apt model right so the model i am saying is a time series arima i am saying it for an example so from the data i can say that you know arima model can be an apt model for the stock prices prediction 
but how do i justify it so whether the bajaj finance uh, stock prices will go up or a down for next one hour or two hours so how do i justify it so when we do model evaluation by comparing with other two models or three models then i can say that this accuracy of this model arima is actually 90% wherein the accuracy of um, the halt winter model is 80% whereas the accuracy of other models i'm saying you know uh, a different model is actually 70% so based on the accuracy level that i can say that you know arima model is actually good because my model accuracy is more than 90% so that way that you can justify it to the customer saying that you know this is the appropriate model that i can able to suggest it for this problem right so whenever the data science problem is actually you know taken so you have to understand one the prob i mean the problem has to be achieved right so when you are achieving this problem um, you uh, you are actually doing a model evaluation so once the model evaluation is taken you have to compare between two three models to justify it then you can always present it to the customers right. so i'll take up you know some more questions so um, so shushank um, there is one more question time series is a method of prediction in machine learning right um, so i can say um, the machine learning um, machine learning is a what do i say um so okay so i'll take a small session on machine learning also so this um, so when i when i when i when i i want to show you something so this data that we can always built it using uh, using a statistical modeling using either r or a python right so i am i i want to build a machine learning model Uh, which means this time series model is actually feeded into my computer wherein all the three years of data which is actually feeded into my 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 programs right so when um, when there is a data which comes in after three years the program can actually learn automatically and then understand the data then it can actually give you the prediction automatically so that is a machine learning so 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 any models in data science can be a machine learning model so be it your logistic regression or a linear regression or maybe clustering technique or any other models that you are building can be a machine learning problem or or it can turn around to a machine learning technique right so it need not to be uh, only time series or a logistic regression whatever use case or whatever data science problem that you are taking it can feed it into your i mean your machine learning technique and it can pick and then provide you the accuracy again the machine learning model has to be trained keep on training on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis based on the need from the customer then when i mean once you are training all the data after some time you can keep it as it is whenever the data comes it can actually do a prediction i mean prediction or forecasting all right so so i'll wait for a couple of minutes to um, see if you have any more questions all right so um So I think no um, no other questions so far. All right. I hope you enjoy the session. Um, I thank you uh, very much for the opportunity given to me uh, from Great Learning. Um, hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.